it is still possible to save money on food on your grocery purchases in 2022 and now coming into 2023 there are certain tips and tricks that are tried and true that are still applicable today and they work in just about any grocery store and to prove my point i'm actually going to shop today on a 50 dollars budget in one of the most expensive grocery stores in my area whole foods at the beginning of this year 2021 talking about some money saving hacks when you're grocery shopping that work just about anywhere and these aren't necessarily a secret we've been talking about these for years in the budget shopping budget cooking community so I'm going to utilize some of those today namely shopping sales looking for discounts and specials in the store purchasing certain items in a generic or house brand, especially commonly used ingredients and household staples, and also thinking about meal planning. Traditional grocery stores run sales, or most traditional grocery stores run sales almost every single week on various items around the store, and Whole Foods is no exception. They put items on sale. You can check this out in the Whole Foods app and see some of the sale items or the reduced price items that are available in their store at any given time. Now, a lot of traditional grocery stores, these sales are gonna rotate from week to week, but I also find that these sales tend to be seasonal. So since it's close to Christmas time, whenever I'm in here shopping and filming, a lot of things I'm seeing on sale are things like baking items or stuff for holiday dinners. Things like special meats or fish or cheeses or wines or maybe even the kinds of things that make good gifts or like I said that you might be seeing at a holiday party or gathering this time of year. And then after Christmas at the beginning of January I find that we're seeing more sales on things that are quote healthy on special dietary items like for people who are going to start a keto diet or a paleo diet and then as we get closer to the Super Bowl I see sales on things like chips and crackers and snack foods. So you get the idea. Sometimes the sales are going to follow whatever holidays or social gatherings might be happening throughout the year and that might be a good time to stock up on some items that uh, your family likes that will keep for a while. So just because you're shopping in an expensive store doesn't mean that there aren't some deals to be had. For instance, right now, eggs are cheaper here than at Aldi. I can buy 12 grade A large white eggs for $3.39 here. And last week when I was shopping at Aldi, they were $3.96. So yes, eggs are cheaper here at Whole Foods right now at my Whole Foods than they are at my Aldi. That's the world we're living in. A pound of butter at my Walmart right now is currently $4.48 here at Whole Foods is $4.29. Now, not everything is going to be a fantastic deal everywhere, which is why if you have the option of shopping at multiple stores, sometimes it's good to know your price points and to check your local sales ads. For instance, I just saw the Purely Elizabeth Granola here for $7.49, and I just got that from Thrive Market, same size, same kind, same brand, for $4.89, and Thrive Market is sponsoring today's video. Thrive Market is an online grocery retailer on a mission to make healthy living affordable for everybody. And they do that by offering thousands of natural and organic products on their website at prices that are below traditional retail. In fact, they are so committed to bringing you the best price that they actually have a price match guarantee. And they're so committed to this that if you find a product that they offer in a store near you at a lower price, they will actually match that price. And they even even make it really really easy for you to compare prices because they actually have an app with a barcode scanner so you can use that in the store not pictured in this thrive market unboxing is a package of my daughter's favorite pretzels that she requested from either from a brand called Quinn and so when I was in Whole Foods the other day shopping I actually looked at the price and all I had to do was pull up my thrive market app and scan that barcode and I could see that they were actually a better deal at thrive market than they were at Whole Foods that day. Plus, I have found lots of really fantastic deals whenever I am looking for sales and specials on their website. And today, if you are ordering from Thrive Market for the first time, they have a really, really great introductory offer. Whenever you go to thrivemarket.com slash Mom or you follow the link in the description box, you're going to get 30% off your entire order. Plus, 
a free gift worth up to $60. And some of the grocery savings tips that I share here on this channel apply whenever I am shopping with online grocery retailers like Thrive Market as well. I've already mentioned looking for sales, but they offer a line of house brand pantry staples that I buy all the time. Things like tomatoes, rice, pasta, so many great products that I've stocked my pantry with. But they also offer a lot of name brand products, especially products that are geared toward specific dietary preferences or requirements. In fact, you can sort their website according to your dietary preference and see all of the products that they offer that cater to that. So if you want to eat paleo, if you want to eat vegan, if you want to eat gluten-free, if you are starting a keto diet, they have lots of products that you can peruse on their website that cater to those specific eating preferences. I was super excited to see these riced broccoli and riced cauliflower packages in their Thrive Market house brand available. I'm gonna do some lunch preps with these very soon. This Kevin's cilantro lime sauce, it is paleo and keto friendly, it says here on the package, but I just like the taste of it. I think it's absolutely delicious. I throw this into the crock pot with beef, with chicken. I think it would be really good with pork, just a super easy like dump and go easy protein option. My kids Kids also really like this lesser evil Himalayan pink salt popcorn. I like it too. And I was able to get three bags with eight little individual servings in it and way cheaper than in my regular grocery stores. This Kodiak cake blueberry lemon muffin mix. So good. A repurchase. I'm going to make these again very soon. So many deals on lots of different products, including some products that I don't see in my regular grocery stores that I can shop for online and have delivered right to my doorstep using carbon neutral shipping and carefully packed in biodegradable packaging. So seriously, if you have been on the fence about trying it, now is the time. Follow that link in the description box or go to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom. When you sign up for a membership, the best bang for your buck is just to do the annual membership because it comes out to around five bucks a month. Plus they gift a membership to a family in need for each membership that's purchased. And then take advantage of that introductory offer, 30% off your entire first order. That's just 30% off your whole order. That's on top of the already you know, discounted products that they're offering and the sales that they're offering. Plus you'll get a free gift worth up to $60. Check it out. Link in the description, thrivemarket.com slash cminimom. Thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video and being a longtime supporter of my channel. Another important savings tip, and it might even be my top savings tip, even above shopping sales, is to try to purchase items in a house brand or a generic brand, especially if they are sort of pantry staples or refrigerator staples. I find that the simpler the item is, like the shorter the ingredient list, if it's just beans or just pasta or just rice or canned goods or frozen vegetables, the more likely it is to be pretty much the same or very close to the name brand. It's just that I'm not paying for that name brand label. I just want to pay for the beans or the spaghetti or the frozen broccoli that I'm buying and not get upcharged because I needed to buy it in a name brand. I realize that this is not always true for everything. I've talked about being a brand snob about certain things like Oreo cookies. I just think they have a very singular taste that is difficult to mimic. But for just that basic stuff especially, you can almost always find a house brand in your local store that's going to be less than the name brand. Another savings tip is to think about additional discounts or promotions that you can get for certain items throughout the store. Maybe they're items that are clearanced out. Maybe it is a promotion that is running because if you buy certain items together, you get an additional discount at the register. Maybe it's a further reduction in price for being a part of a certain store loyalty or rewards program. For instance, at Whole Foods, because I am an Amazon Prime member, I actually get additional discounts on certain items throughout the store. Today, my favorite apples were on sale, Opal apples, but because I'm an Amazon Prime member, I got another discount on top of the sale price, and so that discount was taken at the register and I paid less than even the sale price. And don't forget about all of those other rebate apps like Fetch Rewards where all you have to do is scan your receipt into Fetch and you earn points that you can then trade in for gift cards. And Ibotta, which I actually utilized today on the Siggy's yogurt, I got a dollar back for purchasing two of those. The sign up bonuses for those seem to be changing from time to time. If I have some referral links still, I'll leave them in the description box below. A lot of you probably already utilize those, but those are just some examples of additional discounts you can look for besides just shopping the sale prices. This is what I ended up with from 
Whole Foods, and believe it or not, this was right around $50. We'll talk about the total here in a minute. But besides the dozen eggs, which I had already mentioned, I picked up some bacon. Yes, I know this is a splurge, but sometimes it's nice to be able to splurge on some things, even on a tight budget, and I have something in mind for this bacon as far as recipes go. Whole chickens were only $1.99 a pound. I found one that was a little under eight bucks, so this is about a four pound whole chicken, and I'm gonna get probably two meals out of that chicken. I like at a grocery store like Whole Foods, all of the specialty meats and cheeses and all of the special things they have in their bakery and their deli, and that they have a full butcher's counter and so I picked up some of this Pecorino Romano here this was kind of in the ends bucket like this was probably the end of their big block of this and it was actually cheaper than the Parmesan was and because Pecorino Romano is pretty salty a little bit of it goes a long way I was also really excited to see Cotija cheese because I like can't find this in any of my other grocery stores that I frequent. And so I picked up some of that as well. I've got an idea for it. Some corn tortillas, one package of spaghetti. They have several different options for really good looking loaves of sandwich bread there, but I just went with the classic white bread. I don't worry too much about fiber in the bread because we're gonna eat lots of fruits and vegetables, right? My kids like the white bread and when I look at the added sugars in it, it's actually the same as the whole wheat bread. So you can come at me if you want, but I got the white bread. I also really like that Whole Foods and some other grocery stores that I shop in have bulk bins where you can actually just buy a little bit of various and sundry items, not just nuts and candies, but staple foods like rices and oats and quinoa. So I picked up some just conventional rolled oats there because it was actually cheaper to buy them from the bulk bin than in a canister. And I was also thinking about snacks for this little meal plan. So I decided to pick up some popcorn. And I know this doesn't look like a lot of popcorn, but it only takes a few tablespoons of popcorn to pop several cups of popped popcorn. Two pounds of basmati rice, two Siggy's yogurts, and one container of soy milk, which I got from the non-refrigerated milk section just in the aisles. My black beans. I thought these looked really interesting in the freezer section. Potato poppers, petite crispy bites with a fluffy potato filling. Comment down below if you tried these before. I just thought they looked really interesting. I thought maybe they were just tater tots, but they're not tater tots because they had tater tots next to these. And I thought these would be really good in the air fryer. Fresh produce, I just picked up my apples and some baby carrots, but no worries. I did pick up lots of frozen produce here. I have some mixed vegetables, some broccoli florets, and some cut green beans, big bags of those to go along with these meals. And you've heard me say it here before, but I feel like frozen veggies, especially when there are no sauces and no seasonings added, I think they just get a bad rap sometimes. I actually looked at the fresh broccoli because it was cheaper pound for pound than the frozen broccoli, but it didn't look that good. And I have to think about the fact that it's been harvested, stored, transported, probably stored again, and then sitting out for somebody to buy. And frozen produce is usually packaged within 24 to 48 hours of being picked. So there's a lot of really good nutrients that are locked in because of the way that they prep this. My subtotal for all of this was $53.94. And I was scratching my head because I was keeping track as I was shopping. But I realized when I looked at my receipt that I had forgotten to add the cost of the cutija cheese into my total as I was shopping because it was sort of an impulse purchase for me. I just grabbed it because I hadn't seen it anywhere else where I'd been shopping and I wanted to use it in one of the recipes. So $53.94, except then I saw the Tony's Chocoloni. And I have not seen as good a selection of this brand of chocolate and all the different kinds of it in any store. Even my little Trader Joe's doesn't have the same selection as my Whole Foods. They even had a seasonal one for Christmas. And you know how I feel when you're on a tight budget, if you can possibly spare a few dollars for a treat, I think you should do it. So I ended up getting the milk chocolate caramel cookie. I haven't tried that kind before. Really looking forward to it. And the thing about Tony's is that this is a really large chocolate bar. And so it just takes a little bit of it, you know, just a little bitty treat, a little, little snack each day to kind of satisfy that sweet craving. So my total for everything was $57.53. Now, let me tell you what I would do with all of this for a meal plan. Getting good deals on food by shopping sales, buying generic or house brands, looking for additional promotions around the store, utilizing rebate apps, 
that's all well and good but if you don't have a plan for how you are going to utilize all that if you don't make a meal plan then sometimes we aren't saving money because sometimes things go to waste or produce is spoiling before we get to use it or we're not rotating our stock efficiently in our pantry and of course it's probably better to think about this before you go out and shop maybe look at what you already have on hand things in your refrigerator that you want to use up items in your pantry that are half used or open stuff from your freezer that's been there a while maybe take a look at the sales flyers for the local stores in your area and kind of put together a meal plan that way but as I was going through and shopping at Whole Foods and even though I was sticking to a budget I wasn't just throwing things into my cart willy-nilly I was actually trying to think about how I was going to utilize that to create meals and snacks I've been craving some carbonara and since the eggs were a pretty good price and the bacon was on sale I thought this was a great opportunity to make carbonara and that's the reason why I picked up the pecorino romano as well so that I can make a really easy carbonara and since I was buying eggs and I knew that I would have some left over I thought that I would pick up some tortillas and the black beans and maybe make some breakfast tacos or migas and I could have those little potato poppers along with that meal. And that could be a breakfast or a dinner. I made a video a couple of months back where I showed how I make a whole chicken in the crock pot. And I would probably in this case, utilize a little bit of the spaghetti that I have and the rice to make a homemade rice a to go along with the chicken after I cook it in the crock pot. And then the carcass from the chicken, I would use the next day to create a really easy chicken broth and whatever chicken I had left over, I would use along with the broth and maybe my bag of mixed veggies to create like a chicken soup, like a chicken vegetable soup. I might even throw a little bit of cooked rice in there just to you know, make it a little bit more filling. I could use the bread to have a few slices of toast. I think that would be a really yummy lunch prep perhaps for this time of year because it's winter and I think soup is something that I often crave in these cold days. When I checked the prices of the dairy milk in store, it was just gonna be kind of a budget buster for me and I really didn't think I needed a lot of it, but I wanted something to make my oatmeal with that would probably make it a little bit more satisfying. And I ended up going with the soy milk as opposed to one of the other plant-based milks like almond milk or oat milk because there are seven grams of protein in a one cup serving of soy milk. So even if I'm only using a half a cup to make my oatmeal I would be getting a few extra grams of protein in there as well I picked up the oats with breakfast in mind of course and I thought you know if I'm in a pinch I could use the apples that I purchased and chop those up and put a few of them in a nice steaming bowl of oatmeal if I have peanut butter on hand if I have brown sugar on hand or if I have any nuts or dried fruit um, if you're working with a little bit of a pantry um, you might have some other options where that is concerned I can also do overnight oats and I can also turn oats into smoothies I discovered in the last year and of course I have the frozen broccoli and I have the frozen green beans that I can use for green veggie sides with some of those meals I also have some baked baby carrots which can be used along with the meals to add a little bit of you know fiber rich veggies or I could use those as a snack along with the popcorn and the apples that I purchased. So is this enough to feed my family for an entire week? No, probably not. I mean, I definitely could feed myself, maybe even myself and my husband for an entire week. I think this would be enough food for two people, but I did easily get four family size meals out of this, plus a couple days worth of breakfast, some snacks in there, even a little bit of a treat. And I think that's not too bad for like a midweek haul for 50 bucks. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to Thrive market for sponsoring don't forget to check them out in the description box below or visit thrivemarket.com slash see mom pick up one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there